Okay, so um, my name is Diane Mack. I've come from um, Evans Jones Associates. Um, and basically, I'd like to thank you for inviting me today for Women's International Day. Um, such an important day, I think, to mark, like, um, especially for my career, the, um, the amount of people I've come across and still do that are so quick to judge and stereotype us as um, women men. Fortunately for me, after they've done that, not long after they, they stood sorry. Um, but it's, uh, and I think Ken's could vote for that. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I sort of fell into my career. Um, when I was at school, I was by far my staff student, but I held my own. And um, for that reason, I wanted to become a teacher. Um, I'm so glad now to be a terrible teacher, actually, thinking about this, but um, that is my career goal. And my parents were pleased, I think, um, a lot of my friends have been uni me and the dog and becoming teachers and they got accepted. I then got to uni and it was completely not uh, washed out. I think we partied non-stop. Um, I was student loans, became aware of shoe fund. I think we became the most... Uh, best customers in the day ever to be seen in Cardiff. And, um, you know, I wouldn't change it if you actually loved it, um, but you know, you still have to move on for me. And, and I remember thinking, well, if you want to keep this like going, I've been out, you know, three, four nights a week and um, living in Cardiff, away from home, you're going to need to get things for the job. And um, there was an advert going for a trainee recruitment centre. I've no idea what recruitment was all about. We've seen it was a bit of a maybe an admin role. Um, managed to blag my way in there. It was a permanent role, but at the time in my head, um, it was just a temporary fix to contribute to the shoe fund and I was drinking that. Um, absolutely loved it. It was nothing like expected. It was very sales driven, very target driven. Um, and it didn't feel like work to me because it was just a platform to speak to different people day in, day out. Um, and I love the chat, which helps. And um, and yeah, I loved it. But I soon found um, my own way of doing things where um, the senior consultants might train at 100 companies a day, um, finding the work and then finding the candidate and then hoping to get placement and um, I would always do things differently where um, I would find my favourite candidate could be an accountant and then ring every accountant in the area and tell them they'd be my top three or somewhere I'd like to place my candidate um, and I'd remember telling them you know she got to act quick we've got an offer on the table um, so we needed to you know, push them in. Um, and he worked for me, and, and I remember the management team and um, the senior team said, it never work, you know, you want to make it a month. Um, and, I just, and I just remember the thing to well, no, you know, it's a faster way of doing with things. And for whatever reason, in recruitment, I don't know whether you've got any um, experience with recruiting agencies, but for whatever reason, they can give a donut every week. Why is donut? I've got no idea. <laughs> it's... I just don't know where they would do it. Um, so I used to take McDonald's breakfast to a big construction site, probably Hank was living when probably back in the day, um, and big industrial sites. And then what I would do is just chat to the line man, just give them their McDonald's and to come to McDonald's breakfast. Oh. And um, all the time they would be arranging for me to see the manager so I could win them. Um, so up to my first month, I remember um, in a lot of commission, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to go to the back and tell my mum, definitely not going to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to work in the industry for the treatment, which children means the other one in Swan Wednesday, oh, it's definitely not now at this time. Um, and I remember my dad saying, well, <laughs> my dad's always been this nice, he was, um, he was always in work before we got up in the morning. We'd been very good in the finished work, so we didn't see much of it. We'd always been like this chef and driven the sillies. Um, and he said to me, Well, if you think you're that good, 
acid. Um, while you can somebody else try not, you know, bear in mind it's 80, living the life of bribery in my day then. Um, but something clicked and um, I thought, yeah, maybe, you know, in time this could be my career path. I wanted to learn everything there was to know about your document. Um, if you looked at my CV, I would probably have to use CV every, every six months with job hopping. But I was job hopping for the reason I wanted to learn the different industries. I wanted to know about um, body, nutrition, head, tape, anything there was to know, I wanted to know. And that was great. I, by this time, I think I'd been in the industry for three years. I started to work night. Um, I did a boyfriend. And I just started a new job. I've been an assistant at age set up an old recruitment agency, which was amazing. I got to see about um, to get to know contracts and policies, and it was brilliant. Brilliant to be them. And then I was pregnant unexpectedly, <laughs> and I'll never forget. I remember it like yesterday where she, when I told my manager, after it sunk in, I was happy and excited. Probably not the day I found out, but the day after, I was <laughs> great. And I remember going in and telling her, oh, I'm pregnant, um, I'm excited. And I remember her sitting down and saying, is this really what you want? Do you think that um, you should keep the baby? And, and uh, I was mortified and I just, I remember thinking, this is coming from another woman, and I think I was so naive, I w wouldn't expect that from somebody. And she said, you know, you can't have it all, you either have your career, your high brain career. You know, I was probably working 14, 15 hours a day, um, or you have a baby, you know, it's, it's up to you. Um, so I quit that day and went home, see my parents, and like, oh, no, this suddenly had there. My dad was like, well, it's up to you, you never should be quoted anything. If you want it all, you've, you've got to fight for it. And if you think you're good enough, then you just get on and do it. Um, so I went on and had my my own test. I was in a really um, strong position, really, because I'd always taken my clients with me wherever I went, building strong relationships. Um, and I managed to work from home two days a week. A good salary, love my independence, um, love to be able to go to work, love to work from home, be able to take my children to school, pick them up. Um, it was absolutely great. And then over the years, when we didn't want to become clients, let me to um, open loads of different opportunities. I think when um, not such a great idea was like opening a call center and then opening an agency and um, but I had the confidence, I think, from the support of my parents, my husband, was it's okay to face. So we can try these things and um, and it was great. And then I sort of was in my little bubble up until about 2015, where I was on good money, from home, and being a mother, being a wife. Um, and one of my main clients to be for Sands, um, a national hall, yeah. Asked if I'd work for him full time, and I remember saying to him, Well, you know what, I won't have work here full time. The next time I get out of this future of a blue where um, I need to leave my house, um, I'm going to set up an agency. And he said, Well, could you apply the amount of drivers that I did? Because that's what you need to find this sort. Would you be able to do uh, um, the volume of drivers across me? And I said, Yes, I'll do that. Um, and I said, well, let's go into business together. And I came home with my husband. I did the way to study with him. He said, oh, but you know, I went with John and her, you know. And uh, we decided to go for it. And I remember sitting down in the boardroom and um, we started negotiating. And he was like, so what is it going to cost me? And this is what he said. And I said, well, these are my rules. I don't start at half past nine any morning. Uh, but you know, we've got a 24 hour operation, everybody works six to six days. I, like, I start half past nine every morning, um, 
think that's the only way it's going to work for me. Um, if I work 15 hours a day in the office or three, I don't get managed, I get the job done. Um, I have the chief task in 50 50 of the business and um, a lovely salary and a car, um, which was never heard of back in them days. And we struck a deal and we created any zones. So within a week, we'd set up the business, everything was ready to go. Um, I remember him asking me at the time, so why are you called Diamond's Jones Associates? And then said, because we sound like a solicitor. And he was like, but you want to sound like a recruitment agency? And I was like, well, no, because when I put my sales calls in, the majority of clients would answer the phone to the solicitor. They certainly not going to answer to a recruitment agency, which works. And um, so that was great. And my first task with me was to present to his board on how we would need to deliver 80 drivers for weeks in two locations that couldn't be further away from cross hands. And um, I remember walking in, I was so excited. It was my first day, I had a new state on, and all pinned up ready to go. And I remember walking into the conference room and um, there was a table of eight men and a really, really scary looking woman at the time. And before I could even introduce myself, um, this man stood up and he said, well, if this is what we've got to rely on to get us through this contract, we might as well shut up shop and go home now because this one's all legs and lipstick. You know, how old is she? 12? And I don't know if yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned on his head to him. I said, luckily for you, I said, we like a challenge. The drivers isn't a challenge. I said, we're working with such a chauvinistic narrow-minded man like you is going to be the challenge. I said, but we will get there. And I remember inside I was trembling. And I said, well, no, you've, you know, I've got a fight to get I get through. We delivered 137 drivers in the first four weeks. And in our first year, we turned over just over a million pounds. We now in year seven and turning over to just over seven million. And we just got to lose the first attractions on each and every and one and everything. So I think the lessons I learned was it's okay to want it on. It's okay that we make mistakes. It's okay that we get emotional. Just because you can get emotional doesn't mean we're weak. And um, it's okay to demand what you're worth. And I think the amount of people I've met, um, I've met far more amazing, great people than I have. But, and, um, yeah, I think that's my story. So I think I probably missed out loads of bits. Um, but yeah, thanks for your time. Thank you.